A cave of crimson, flames billowing high. That is where he makes his nest. Best to not go nigh. Fire scorching the earth rains down from the sky. When his highness sets his eyes on you, it's time to say goodbye. The king deserves his due. Hey there, my name is CR Volcanic or Connor, and I've been playing Monster Hunter since I was 13. Yep, all the way back in 2010, I got Monster Hunter Try for the Wii. And back in this innocent time before I knew what a flagship monster was, or what Free View Night was, or that there were other Monster Hunter games on the PSP and PS2, I liked Rathalos. Still do, in fact, quite a bit. Back before I had any idea what kind of kingly status the guy had in the franchise, Rathalos always just hit right. His design simple and quintessential, yet unique and unforgettable. The game called him the King of the Skies, and I believed it. For a kid whose first introduction to Monster Hunter was Tri's very limited roster of 18 bosses, Rathalos was pretty damn imposing. This crimson dragon that could poison you, light you on fire, and stay out of your reach in the air whilst pelting you with fireballs and dive bombing you with its claws made for an opponent I remember being intimidated to fight by myself. Nowadays, I know a whole lot more about the franchise and been playing for 13 years. So I've seen and fought things a lot more challenging than Rathalos. He's definitely gone down on the level of monsters I'm intimidated by, but I still love the guy. And I'm happy to see his familiar face in every game in the series. Whenever a new Monster Hunter game gets announced, and he shows up in a reveal trailer, there's this feeling of home that I get every time. He serves as this authority of legitimacy, this official decree that a new Monster Hunter game is upon us, if you will. I still remember back in 2017 when Monster Hunter World was announced. I watched a lot of other people react to the trailer as it was shown live during E3, and a lot of them had this similar journey of emotions. That first world trailer kinda looked like Monster Hunter, but had so much new and different mechanics that it kinda didn't. And the people watching would go back and forth and back and forth on whether or not it was Monster Hunter. Until Rathalos comes bursting out of the trees and there's this rush of full recognition and realization that we were going to get this absolutely ridiculous overhaul of the franchise. That was a really fun moment to be a fan of Monster Hunter. And that recognition, that built-in part of Monster Hunter's DNA that Rathalos is, is expanding. Rathalos himself, his armor, his weapons, all iconic symbols of Monster Hunter that any game in the series would feel naked without. Unfortunately, nowadays we see him so much that I think he's starting to get taken for granted in a few corners of the fandom. I've heard the words basic, mid, oversaturated, needs a break, boring, thrown around occasionally. And I strongly disagree with that sentiment. I want to preface from the jump that I'm attacking the idea, not the holders of said idea. This isn't a call out, but a tribute to what I think is an exceptional video game mascot that I think deserves a bit better than he gets from a few people. He might not be in my top 10 monsters, hell, I don't think he's in a lot of people's top 10, but I think the guy still deserves a lot of respect and admiration. So I'm going to give it to him. On the off chance you're watching this and have no idea what a Rathalos is, let me give you the breakdown. Rathalos is typically a red and black fire-breathing wyvern with poison-tipped talons, a pair of massive wings, a long tail ending in a spear-like point, and a distinct crown-like arrangement of small horns atop its head. He is exclusively a male, with the green-scaled Rathian being the female of the species. A Rathalos is typically the most powerful thing in the air in the territory it claims. There's very few monsters that are an outright threat to a Rathalos, considering a lot of monsters on its level of strength are terrestrial, and most monsters that are significantly stronger than him are pretty rare beasts, like Elder Dragons. It's not without aerial competition, but a Rathalos is almost always going to be the king of the skies wherever it chooses to lay claim. 
You'll find Rathalos mostly in forests and volcanic regions, with other very mountainous maps being a safe bet as well. The ancient forest in Monster Hunter World shows us off probably better than any map in the series' history. Its nest perched at what feels like the top of the world almost seems built exclusively for Rathalos and Rathian. This roost keeps them safe from just about anything in the forest below while at the same time it lets them swoop down and hunt the forest's inhabitants. I think the very early game of Monster Hunter World made Rathalos the scariest he's ever been. Typically, a Monster Hunter game will lock higher level monsters out of lower level quests, even if they can exist on that map in a higher level mission. Not here. In the early hours of the game, I remember very vividly this feeling of always looking up. Because while I was trying to get through the very early bosses, there was always this chance that I could be descended upon by a hungry, massive, fire-breathing wyvern capable of killing me in a hit or two. And it happened a couple of times. In that circumstance, I could either run or put my real target between me and the Rathalos. Those early hour thrills I had in terror of being ambushed by a Rathalos while I was weak and defenseless took me back to my intimidation of him that I felt him try almost 10 years prior to that. It was an exhilarating feeling and cemented this living, breathing ecosystem that World created. Whether you love him or hate him or think he's overused in the franchise, Seriously, if you count every spinoff in the Be Live Action movie, there's like 13 different versions of this guy. We still owe him for being the face of this franchise that we love so much. In fact, I think calling him oversaturated is a pretty silly statement. You notice and be upset if Scorpion wasn't in Mortal Kombat, or if Pikachu wasn't in Pokemon. They're supposed to be there. They're mascots that instantly tell non-fans what they're looking at while drawing in potential new fans and giving established fans a surge of joy and nostalgia. He's baked into the DNA. He's our envoy, our messenger. I promise you, Monster Hunter would not be selling as well as it is right now without that face at the forefront to create recognition. My friends who don't even play Monster Hunter know what Rathalos is. The guy's been in Final Fantasy and Metal Gear Solid, had his armor in Lost Planet 2, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, and Smash Bros. 4. He was featured in a cool PlayStation 4 commercial, and was a whole boss in Smash Ultimate, a game that did not have a Monster Hunter character on the fighter roster. The Monster Hunter World poster on my wall, as well as the box art for the game, don't have Nergigante on them, no. They've got Rathalos right front and center. I'm sure he's a pretty big pop culture figure in Japan, where Monster Hunter has been huge for a very long time. But slowly, we're starting to see Rathalos become a bigger figure of the video game community worldwide, gradually becoming a character more and more synonymous with video games as a whole, like so many mascots before him. And I think that's super cool that this franchise that was ridiculously niche when I got into it is now becoming more and more prominent in the video game subculture. Speaking of the nicheness of Old School Monster Hunter, and its evolution both as games and as a franchise, Rathalos is a pretty great measuring stick to see how far the series has come over the years. Being in every game, the changes he has gone through reflect the changes the series has gone through as well. The differences in the King of the Sky's models, fight, and sound design, though gradual, are a bit striking when you compare the original from 2004 to 2022's modern iteration in Sunbreak and Rise. His original model in the first and second generation games was more sharp and jagged, with long pronounced spines and spikes on his tail, head, wings, and neck. He used to be a lot scrawnier as well. His black and red coloration was muddier, and his textures had a much lower resolution. But they don't look bad considering they are subject to the confines of the PlayStation 2 and PSP. A thought I had looking at the old Rathalos model is that I can kind of see where Monster Hunter Frontier's design philosophy came from. People like to complain about how overly spiky and spiny a lot of Frontier's monsters are. Well, looking at Rathalos, he was way sharper back then, around when Frontier was being made. Some of the designs for Frontier's unique monsters are fairly in line with how monsters were designed for the original games. Much thinner 
and with more exaggerated spikes and spines. Obviously, there's a few places where they opted to turn the dial on that design choice up to 11 and then proceed to rip the dial off, but it is cool to see where the branching design philosophy came from, and that Frontier's more bonkers creature design does have some of its roots in the classic design philosophy. Rathalos as a fight in the first and second generation games, to me, is also a pretty good reflection of those games' combat design. The good and the bad. The original few Monster Hunter games were a great testing ground for Capcom, who set out to try and create monsters that felt like real animals, living and interacting with a breathing ecosystem in a semi-realistic way. The designs and the fights were not overly complicated. The monsters each felt like they belonged in the areas you fought them in, and the beasts themselves had gimmicks that made them feel real. As a player, you'd think, yeah, an animal that looked like this would fight in this way. A big red wyvern like Rathalos would fly up in the air and try to dive bomb its prey. And it's very dragon-like, so why wouldn't it breathe blasts of fire? Rathalos also highlighted how annoying and limited these gimmicks were could be, and how they could turn some of the classic fights into utter slogs. Rathalos used to jump up in the air, stay in one spot outside the reach of melee weapons, pelt you with fireballs, and dive bomb you with poison claws. If you didn't have flash bombs, you were sitting there for like 90 seconds waiting for the damn thing to come down. And to avoid the claws easily, you had to sit under him and just wait. Pace killing, overlong, tedious gimmicks that required item spamming to counteract and get the actual fight rolling again was a huge issue in the old games, and Rathalos wasn't exempt. But I can't say that there wasn't a charm to these old fights. Tedious or not, the need to use tools to counter an animal using its natural abilities to defend itself is such a fun idea that has been unfortunately dwindling a little in this recent generation. And I hope the development team can find ways to strike the balance between weapon combat and item utility once again. For the third and fourth generation, Rathalos' fight changed slowly very similar to the original generations at first and gradually becoming a bit more dynamic and a bit more like what we're seeing in the fifth generation now, with a steady increase of new attacks and animations as the games went by. They also became faster, more fluid, and the verticality added to hunting that came in the fourth generation allowed us to engage much more easily with flying monsters. He also relies way less on flying beyond the reach of melee weapons, focusing much more on aerial combos closer to the ground. His look got overhauled quite a bit though. He's a lot less sharp, with his spines being shortened, rounded off, and thickened. He also looks a lot bulkier, making his original render look pretty skinny. His colors also get darker and more saturated with deeper reds and blacks all over his body, and a lot more color variation in his much larger wings, now sporting these faint violets and oranges. He looks a lot more compact and muscly, which is funny considering he gets a lot faster and more agile. This is the Rathalos I grew up with, this transition period between the classic and modern iterations. Not as gimmick-oriented as the original, but not as aggressive and combo-oriented as the modern. I still have a lot of nostalgia for fighting him atop Monster Hunter Tribe's volcano and chasing him all over the cliffs of the deserted island. I'd eventually go back and fight his older incarnation in the PSP games, but the much slower tempo and reliance of item usage just wasn't quite as fun. There was also this time during Monster Hunter's 3rd and 4th generation where they loved to use Rathalos as this measuring stick to compare their new big bad flying wyverns against. Astalos and Soregios both got fight cutscenes with Rathalos in two games back to back, which goes to solidify Rathalos as this metric that other monsters can and will be compared against. Malzino got this treatment recently, showing off how cool it is by being able to snag and drain a Rathalos very easily. So now we get to the modern incarnation of Rathalos. And quite frankly, this version is awesome, especially his Rise and Sunbreak version. His design here is really interesting. It's this cross between both previous incarnations. The bulk and general shape is still intact from the third and fourth, but his colors have lost a bit of saturation, especially in the wings, and his spines look a little bit sharper than they did the last few years. 
It goes without saying, but the texture and detail on his new bottle looks immaculate. The scales and armored plating looking incredibly lifelike. In some ways, he looks more like an evolution of the classic Rathalos, as opposed to the third and fourth generation versions. Now, bear in mind, when I do videos on other monsters, I'm not going to go quite as in-depth with their physical changes over the years, unless there's something drastic to talk about. I'll touch on their design overhauls, but not as much as I did in this video. And the reason for that is, as I said earlier, Rathalos is the measuring stick. He is the reflection. He is the mascot. To an extent, I'd be repeating some points over and over in each video, because a lot of the core changes in the design philosophy of every monster's models, abilities, behavior, attack patterns, movesets, hunter interactions, environmental interactions, coolness of cutscenes, integration of new mechanics, across the board, can be seen in Rathalos. The evolution of this one monster across the last 19 years is a one-to-one -one reflection of the evolution of the franchise itself. Now do you see why I disagree with the notion that he's oversaturated? Why I think he is owed more respect than he's given? Why he needs to continue as the forerunner of this franchise? It's because his history is the franchise's history. His changes are the franchise's changes. His improvements are the franchise's improvements both as games and as a recognized part of the gaming world. Let me circle back a little bit to his fight in Sunbreak. And with a lot of these videos, I'm going to be talking about the monster's most recent fight, because I'd say 95% of monsters' best incarnations are their newest ones. And the Rathalos fight in Sunbreak is awesome. This feels like Rathalos was imagined to be all those years ago. The overhaul in his moveset here is pretty steep. Steeper than a lot of the jumps I've seen for a monster between two games that immediately follow one another. He's got more ground-based options with bite attack combos. He'll take off into the air straight out of his charge attacks and combo into that fireball. He repositions in midair more, only to touch down and start up his ground combos again. He covers his former blind spot below him with tail strikes. And although he still has his single shot fireballs, he has this new roster of sweeping, arcing, full-on flame breath attacks that he's never had before. These big wind up high damage, long lasting sweeping flame attacks. One of which he does while flying across the arena and covering this whole section in fire. There's some of the most badass attacks out there. There's so much fluidity in the animations as they chain from one to another. They feel like natural follow-ups rather than a programmed sequence of events. There's very little rigidness, very little wasted time. I may sound like a broken record, but this truly is a showcase of how well the monster AI tracking animations and combos have improved from the slower, blockier attack, move, turn, attack, move, turn formula that the old games were restricted to. He has more airborne attacks than he has ever had. But it's less annoying, because they come out so fast, flow into one another, and naturally transition between air and ground much more seamlessly. He wastes so much less of your time because of this increased intensity. There's also the heightened verticality, speed, and tool sets of We Hunters as the games go on, but that's a whole other topic. There's this spectacle, and velocity, and power added to Rathalos in Sunbreak that's pumped so much life into his fight. And bear in mind, this is a 19 year old boss fight technically. And some of the most impactful changes to said fight came around only in the last five years, with the best additions being as recent as last summer. With a Monster Hunter 6 looming closer and closer as Sunbreak comes to the end of its development cycle, there's no reason not to believe that this fight won't further improve considering its best changes are his most recent ones. More consistent than Rathalos' design and enhancement and fight over the years has been his gear. Rathalos' armor is almost as iconic as him at this point. It's had almost as many crossovers separate from Rathalos as his namesake has had himself. There's something really simple and yet really unique about the design. More than some other monster sets, it looks like Rathalos bits attached to knight armor, but it doesn't look random or slapped on. The similar horn crown design on your head and his. The way the scales are arranged in arm guards, shoulder guards, and shin guards. There's a style and a substance here, 
a groundedness and realism to go with the spectacle. Monster Hunter nowadays definitely seems to prioritize style in its armor designs. The more modern armor sets sometimes look as though they are the monsters redesigned as humans, rather than armor enhanced with monster parts. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever, I love modern Monster Hunter armor. But the grounded look that doesn't compromise on style in Rathalos' armor is such a well thought out and striking design. Take this higher level Rathalos armor from 4 Ultimate. It looks awesome, no doubt about that. But that horn crown could snap off really easily, and what are those wings on your shoulders actually gonna do? You look awesome, you look like a Rathalos made into a human. But the classic high rank armor? It's not too bulky, it's not over designed, those long spikes realistically might deter a creature from trying to rush you. This feasibly looks like what someone who is making armor out of dragon parts would make. Maybe a bit more stylized than what would be fully realistic, but you can see some of the practicality baked into the design. His weapons are pretty standout too. My favorite being his sword and shield. The shield being a pretty straightforward hunk of scales, but the sword looks like molten lava contained in the form of a blade. I always make it, even if I don't use it. The lance is another big favorite for me. It's his long spear tail, hyper-extended. It's a perfect application of his anatomy as a weapon. His charge blade kind of looks like a flattened version of his face, and the hammer is just his head, on a stick. There's a lot to love here. His scale texture and color palette lend themselves very well to weapon design. Much like his original armor set, most of these weapons feel very stylish, but not over-designed. All maintaining a fierce, sleek, fiery, and scaly motif. I usually find myself in possession of quite a few Rathalos weapons toward the end of a playthrough of a Monster Hunter game. Especially nowadays, when I can slap any weapon's design on any weapon of the same type. I find myself going back to Rathalos weapon skins a lot. I've always loved Rathalos for his station, personality, and design, but I've only never liked his fight. Now though, now I love the Rathalos fight definitively. They somehow leaned more into the flying aspect of his moveset, and yet made him more fun. That's tough. A lot of people really don't like the flying fights in these games. Feel free to disagree, but I think the enjoyment factor of Rathalos has officially gone beyond an okay fight placed on a famous pedigree. He's the best he's ever been, by a country mile, and I'm super curious to see how new mechanics, attacks, and graphics are going to push him even further going forward. Hell, if you want to talk about pushing him forward, we're already kind of there with the numerous incarnations Rathalos has gotten over the course of the games. So, this is the part where I can almost concede to the oversaturation argument. Almost. There's a lot of variations of this guy. Like, over a dozen of them. There's the red one, the blue one, the silver one, uh, the dark red one with, like, orange racing stripes. There's the one that's kind of like the dark red one with the racing stripe, but instead it's glowy and has a watered-down moveset. Uh, there's the one from the movie with a laundry list of things that got wrong, including Rathalos' eye color. There's all of these ones. These two are just him being on fire in different ways. I will say in defense of this, most of these different versions are from various groups of large monster subcategories that they use to apply a new general idea to a host of pre-established monsters. Uh, subspecies, rare species, apexes, deviants, zeniths, crossovers. We could have a separate conversation about Capcom making too many of these subcategories to the point where they're recycling names now. Now, but the point is, over the last 19 years, they've had a lot of ideas to try and branch out and enhance their core monster roster. Can you honestly blame them for using the game mascot to help shepherd along these new ideas? At the very least, it makes sense. Honestly, my biggest contention with this whole debate isn't that there are too many Rathalos, but that they seem to be a bit nervous to really experiment with him. Most of these guys are just fiery er Rathalos. Which is cool, but not cool enough to do mildly differently a dozen times. With the expansion of his moveset that I mentioned earlier, I think it's time we expanded on his formula a little bit too. He's due for an iteration that isn't a fire-breathing dragon. Yeah, sure, that's his brand, but we get it at this point. 
All right, so how did they make 13 different versions of the guy if they're not really that different? Let's start with Azure Rathalos. He harkens to the super early days of monster variations, where they were slightly faster, slightly tankier, slightly stronger color swaps, and that was about it. Nowadays, monster variations are super creative overhauls on a monster's look, behavior, and attacks, but Azure Rathalos wasn't ever one of them. Unfortunately, he still isn't. His only real distinction from Rathalos is that he fights in the air more, so people tend to hate him quite a bit. Which is too bad, because the blue color looks good on him. World, the game for fresh start overhauls, really didn't do Azure any favors. It also washed out his colors real bad. The more I look at these big green wings he had in the third and fourth generations, the more I miss them. Silver Rathalos is where things start getting good. He originally suffered from faster, stronger, tougher syndrome and was made even more annoying by having a shell that reflected most attacks. He and the gold Rathian were unfun pains in the neck for a long time. Fifth generation though, these two got big overhauls, new moves, more metallic textures, and this brand new hellfire mode that simultaneously softened their armor, but gave them this high damage blue fire and an even further expansion of their movesets on top of the ones they already got. These are the definitive Metal Wraths. Silver especially is a relentless, ultra-aggressive opponent that can wall off sections of the arena with blue flame and fire off meteors that explode on a delay. Dread King Rathalos and Apex Rathalos are an odd pairing. Dread King was a decent member of the Deviant Monster gimmick from the Generations games that had this cool, dark red coloration with these ornate orange patterns on his wings. Not the best of the Deviant line, but a solid monster. Apex Rathalos, much like the other Apexes, well, sucks. He took some, not all, of Dread King's moves, abandoned Dread King's cool redesign for a standard Rathalos with darker colors and some bioluminescence, and had no armor. Rise's Apexes are all watered-down versions of the superior Deviants and feel very haphazardly cobbled together. In fact, you know how I mentioned that Apex got some, but not all of Dread King's moves? Yeah, those leftover ones went to Silver. I don't even love Dread King all that much, but man, he got really disrespected. Breezing through the others, Zenith Rathalos is part of the supercharged, overly amped up Zenith gimmick from Monster Hunter Frontier. Flaming Rathalos is an on-fire Rathalos from Monster Hunter Online. Zero Ryusu and its sparkling counterpart are from another line of Frontier monsters called Burst Species. Destruction Wyvern is a crossover recolor from the fairy tale anime on Monster Hunter Explore, and these two cutesy looking Rathalos are called Ratha. They're the mascots of the Monster Hunter Story spin off series, and the Rathalos from the live action movie is technically a greater Rathalos because it's big. Going in depth on all these guys is gonna bloat the script by like two more pages, and so far a lot of them are exclusive to games that never came out in the States, so I have very little experience with them. But they do deserve a mention. It's as I said though, lots of fire. Different colored fire, more intense fire, different methods of dispensing fire, but fire all the same. I think it bears repeating that I would love for Capcom to get experimental with Rathalos. Let him do some new stuff. Break his archetype a little. Let him be kind of wacky. I actually really like the Razewing Ratha from Stories 2 for this reason. Because he's born without wings and just has these black and blue wing limbs with no webbing or bones needed to form a wing. It makes him memorable, much more so than Fire Dragon on Fire. Honestly, I think if we get some crazy new version of Rathlos, that would satisfy a few people who think Rathlos is overstayed as welcome.
We've got an awesome mascot in Rathalos. A full-on, badass, fire-breathing dragon. Wyvern, technically, yes, but fire-breathing Wyvern doesn't have that bunch. Look, point is, he's awesome. And we are currently witnessing him become more iconic. At least in the West. That's kind of cool, right? When was the last time you remember a video game character gradually pull itself into the heights of recognition beyond fans of that character's franchise? Sure, that aforementioned movie probably didn't help much, but on the bright side, nobody saw or talked about it, so that's, I guess, good. Nowadays, I see more and more people who don't play the Monster Hunter games see him and know what they're looking at, at least. Even if they're not interested, the recognition is there. Monster Hunter deserves respect and appreciation, and it's getting it. And that respect and appreciation is owed partially to the beast that's carried the franchise on its back for 19 years. That familiarity, that sense of home, that sense of evolution, the thrill that there's still fresh ideas and untrodden ground in an industry of half-effort rehashes. Rathalos is not in my top 10 monsters, probably not in my top 20, but he is at the core of my favorite video game franchise, the symbol of it. So I'll continue to sing his praises. And I'll continue to refute anyone who says he's overstayed his welcome or needs a break. I would be upset the second he disappeared, and so would 99% of you. Don't take the good things you have in your life for granted. Even if you think you have more than you need. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you've enjoyed, and hit the bell for notifications. Tell me what you think of Rathalos and where he sits in your favorite monsters list, and be sure to send some respect to the king.